I've entitled this video, Reflections on 50 Years of Having Sex. I gave up my virginity. I don't want to say I lost my virginity, but I gave up my virginity at the ripe young age of 13 years old, right when it all kicked in, right when the voice was changing, had a nice girlfriend at a young age, listened to my biology, 50 years of sexual activity, half a century. I have thought, now I'm rambling, I did not organize my thoughts before this, so this is kind of an impromptu teaching. I am heading to my part-time job, did not even take a shower this morning. I'll splash some water on my face when I get there, that's it. Got dressed, threw on a hat, had a cup of coffee, and now I'm on the road. If it's true, which I believe it is, that you become, the two shall become one, one flesh, then I am one with a lot of women. And I have only met two virgins in my lifetime, the rest all have histories, not unlike me. So if a man who has been with a lot of women is with a woman that is with a lot of men, that could be a real recipe for disaster. And it's no wonder that the male-female dynamics in this world are as messed up as they are. Hope for relationships is at an all-time low. Cynicism is at an all-time high. It is no wonder. Would I change things? Let me think about this. I think it's difficult as a man of faith. The tension is between what we want to believe spiritually and what our biology is dictating, so to speak. Telling a man to not have sex is like telling a dog not to bark, a bird you can't fly, and a fish you can't swim. Men's innate desire, this is not something devised by the devil, and don't feel bad for your sex drive. And I will say this, don't, look at, look at my age, I'm still looking at a woman jogging, a half-naked woman jogging on the road. You caught that in real time. A man's inborn, innate desire and drive is to spread his seed. And in order to incentivize that, our creator made that feel good. It wasn't just insert A into B, and then nine months later, a baby will be born. There is pleasure involved in it. So we end up seeking the pleasure. A woman's innate, inborn, natural desire is to nest is to have babies. When you think about the highest and best use of a man's sexual apparatus, num the number one use is to create life. The number one use of breasts and a vagine is to create and feed babies. The secondary use is having fun. And I think what, what's happened in society is we've inverted that, not only biologically, but morally. Now, the vagine is used for pleasure and to attract men. The power of the P, vitamin P. Now, men are, you not now, as if this just recently happened, I just think it's since the creation of man. We've inverted the use of women's sexual parts. We've sexualized everything. Everything is now sexual and unhidden. A woman's body is created to make life. That's why as men, we think that pregnant women are beautiful. We think they're glowing. You look at a pregnant woman, just her skin looks beautiful, her eyes are bright, she looks real pretty, she's real plump, her body is curvy. I mean, even before the bump, even before the baby bump, and we're naturally attracted to that. My Lord, I loved seeing a pregnant wife. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Never forget, you know, after the baby's born, she's on the floor doing crunches, leg lifts to get rid of the weight. Okay, I get that. The woman wants to keep her keep her body up that's that's cool now I spent three and a half years the past three and a half years being celibate <laughs> that's a tough one and that's the that's the thing that a lot of men are gonna struggle with a lot of my followers I am the most uninvited man in the world nobody has been uninvited to more men's conferences retreats podcasts and churches than me nobody because I talk about these issues. I don't keep them a secret. Well, I thought you were a Christian. I am. And my biology is screaming. I don't, guys don't talk about this stuff. Guys will brag about their numbers. And I hate 
even talking about that. The whole quantity versus quality thing. I really don't like that. I'm not. You have desires. Should you freely exercise those desires? I will never moralize you, ever. I will never, ever moralize you. The reason why, even though I studied for ministry and being a therapist, I ended up being a therapist. When I was a boy, up to about the age of 13, I wanted to be a priest. And then puberty kicked in, and I'm like, mm, I don't know if I can, uh, I don't know about this priest thing. And then when I turned 60, I thought to myself, well, you know what, maybe I could be a, be a priest. I thought maybe the sex drive was, was calmer. It is not calmer. Do I think that if we didn't have sex, outside of marriage, do I think things would have been better? I don't know because I have coached and counseled so many men in the past 40 years, so many, uncountable, in the past 40 years, men who waited, men who didn't have sex till they were married, who ended up getting a divorce, the wife dropped the bomb. I'm talking guys who have 10 kids. Literally, I'm talking men who have 10 kids. This is an interesting number. I know a lot of guys that had 10 kids. I And I frequently say that one of my biggest reg regrets is that I haven't been married for 35 years and have 10 children. Hence the, the drive to still wanna create life. I still wanna create life, it's weird. But then you meet women on birth control and most of the women I know have been on hormonal birth control, either taking it pill form or sticking it in, and that appeals to the pleasure without consequences and responsibility part in every man. Would I do anything different? I think the answer to that is I can't do anything about it. And idealism kills, there's a couple things that kill men. Number one is idealism, number two is one-itis. Do I wish that I got married as soon as I had a sex drive? Yeah, and just started cranking out kids and rejoicing in the wife of my youth and taking pleasure in her body and being intoxicated with her love. Yeah, so right now I'm kind of like Solomon looking back on my life and man, have I got lessons to teach. Most of those lessons are very much like Solomon's. It's not, they're not out of success. They're out of failure and pain. Many of my lessons are not because I have achieved a certain status. I've been in darkness. I've been in despair. And there's a lot of woulda, coulda, shoulda in my life. So many people assume because I'm a Christian, because I have an icon of Christ many times in the background that I am holier, that I walk better. Man, my sex drive is as strong as it was when I was 16 years old. And it was hard for the last three and a half years. I can tell you that, it was difficult. But honestly, there was a goal, and that goal was wait till marriage, right? Better late than never. And I do believe that women's sex drive is much greater than men's. I think even after they stopped having kids, or even if they decided to never have kids, and I do think hormonal birth control has trained women to just love sex without responsibility. And it has also trained men to have sex without responsibility. Is there such a thing as responsible sex? Boy, that's a good question. And I know there's gonna be a lot of subscribers that follow me because of this. I know there's gonna be a lot of subscribers that unfollow me because of this. Bye, see ya. Say that jokingly, but I know, I know, how, I know how social media turnover works. That's what 50 years of sexual activity has done for me. Was I in a sex for pleasure mode? Yes but I always knew that it could create life, always. What are your thoughts? I did this for you. Comments down below.